Hello. This uh, video is for my brother and his uh, children, Emma and Anna. So today, after 20 years living here in Southern California, I thought it's time to make a video and show you the birthplace of Orange County. So today we're gonna visit the uh, oldest building, the founding place of Orange County. And we're gonna start off right here at this little monument where uh, the Western civilization, the Spanish culture and the Western culture meets the uh, indigenous culture, the Indians. And uh, for 10,000 years, the Hutchman used to live here on these grounds. Uh, all the way down from Oceanside to uh, Seal Beach, which is like uh, 30 miles north of here. And so the tribe of the Hutchman were living here and they haven't had any contact to Western civilization till the Spanish missionaries, the Spanish soldier, soldiers and the Mexican missionaries came and settled here and they built 21 missions and we are in mission number seven called San Juan Capistrano, the birthplace of Orange County. And so we're gonna walk through the mission today, uh, Emma and Anna, and I'm gonna uh, tell you three secrets of this mission, which are very unique just to San Juan Capistrano. So uh, pay attention and wait for the three secrets just here in Mission San Juan Capistrano. Bye-bye. So come and follow me. We're gonna check out now the main hub, the plaza of the mission, and uh, come and follow me. Here's the main gate, and then you would see this. Here we are in the main plaza uh, of the mission, but in mission times, this would not be here. So this would be an empty space where all the Indian would be catechized, learn about the Catholic faith, would weaving, would dry the cow hides, and all that stuff would take place here. And after the mission has been secularized, here would be a rodeo uh, area, arena, and uh, so they would have rodeos here. So all these beautiful gardens and the ponds of the four evangelists, you would not see here. So this would be battleground ground where they would actually work, the Indians uh, and the Padres. So here we are at the pond of the four evangelists, beautiful little water feature. As I mentioned, this would not be here in the mission times. This, would, uh, this has been built 1920. And um, on the north side here, you see the storage wing of the mission. Uh, so we are facing north right now. Uh, on the east side is the Serras Chapel, one of the, the jewel of the mission. And then here on the south side, we're gonna visit next it's gonna be the kitchen area and uh, some quarters for sleeping and socializing. Uh, the mission was, um, this mission system came to be about uh, this, uh, in uh, 1769 and they built 21 missions as I mentioned all the way from San Diego to north to San, San Francisco and this mission is the first secret has been founded twice that's why we have a district called mission viejo in spanish old mission so that's the reason why orange county has a name called mission viejo because this mission was actually founded twice once in the old location around mission viejo and then on november 1st 1776 here in san juan capistrano again and the reason why they needed to find the mission twice, they had an uprising of Indians in San Diego, and so the soldiers and the padres needed to go down there, help quell the revolution, the little uh, uprising, and then come back a year later and re-establish the mission they had begun here a uh, year earlier. So let's follow me to the south wing, and we show you the living quarters of the padres and the uh, kitchen. Yeah, come on in. So this is the uh, kitchen area where actually young Indian boys between 12 and 14 would, kick, would cook 
for the Padres here. We would have two priests here and they would be helped uh, and aided by Indian boys cooking. And all the ingredients you see here, the beans, the lemons, the apples, the oranges, all of these fruits and vegetables would not have been known to the Hachiman Indians. They also uh, preserved the meat with um, a smoking technique. So first they would put the meat in salt, draw out the water, and then in addition they would smoke because that is the second secret of, the, of this mission. We are in only one of the preserved, the only preserved uh, kitchen and chimney we are, uh, is available here in San Juan Capistrano. So you see the, the black triangles on the sides. So on these uh, niches would be the firewood and then they would, you see the smoke rising here through the, uh, through the chimney all the way up. And so you are standing actually in a big chimney, which is unique to San Juan Capistrano. And uh, that is a second secret of the mission. Got it. Okay. So here is the uh, Ahachiman, uh, the stone, the gossip stone for the women. You see the, all these holes here? So these would be grinded out over years of pounding acorns. So this would be the acorn tree we have right here. And uh, the women and the boys and the girls would collect them throughout the year and uh, grind them in the stone to a powder. This would be their main diet. But because they could not eat this intense, very, very bitter uh, tannic uh, powder, they needed to leach it out for a couple of days before they could uh, bake it. So uh, the Indians didn't have any uh, metal equipment, so that was introduced by the Spaniard, and they were cooking or uh, relying heavily on, on weaving baskets. So no metal was known to them till the Spanish and the Mexican missionaries came and introduced them to pots and pans. The missions were protected by most 12 soldiers, but normally only two to four soldiers were sufficient for a mission. And their, um, how should I call it, uh, purpose was obviously to protect the mission from Indian attacks, as well as educate uh, the Indians in catechism. And the third thing was to discover the area to see if there are different other tribes here and to make uh, landmark excursions around the missions to, uh, to map the land out for future uh, travel. So these were the three uh, main uh, goals or, of the soldiers, protect, survey the land and help uh, teach the Indians in crafts as well in educating them in uh, the catechism. So this is the soldier's barrack right here. This is not, this is a little bit more of a replica uh, than uh, the real adobe structures we see around the missions else, somewhere else. And so let's check out here where the unmarried young soldiers would live in this barrack we're gonna enter right now. So here we are in one of the soldier barracks. And uh, as I mentioned, just two, four to, to 12 soldiers at maximum would be stationed here. Normally, uh, two soldiers would be sufficient and they would have their horses right outside this wall. And one all horse of them always have to be settled, just like modern uh, American police, correct? They always have one car ready to go. And for the soldiers, it used to be the horse. So that's why one horse outside would be um, uh, settled outside right there. And the women would live quite on the opposite end so that there would be no shenanigans going on between the unmarried soldiers and the uh, women. They would be protected and locked up in the uh, north eastern, north, north eastern section of the mission. And here's something interesting. Uh, the Americans have an expression, good night, sleep tight. And the reason why this expression came about if you don't tighten your leather straps up every two to two, two, three days, you would sag through the bag. So that's why the Americans have that expression, 
good night, sleep tight, because they need to tighten up the leather strips uh, once in a while. Tequila! So now I'm going to show you an American dollar. So our next is actually an American dollar. This was called the California dollar, right here. The cowhide. So they used to brand mark with uh, branding the cow so they knew which mission it belonged to. And they had so many cowhides here and were trading these type of leather goods that uh, it became to be known around 1830 that this would be the California dollar because they, everything was paid by cow hides and leather goods. And so they would transport this all the way up to the other side of Dana Point. There's a great book about uh, this from Dana uh, himself written. And they would throw the cow hides down from the cliff so the trade ships could pick it up and in and, and return barter trade different goods for the for the mission the mission needed metal they would need uh, uh, fruits vegetables whatever they couldn't produce here on the grounds they would trade from the english and american ships so what we have here is uh, adobe blocks and they need to be protected because if adobe is not protected then they would disintegrate into sand again adobe is made out of uh, sand water straw and Kupau, Koo poop. So the young Ahachiman boys, they would uh, be turning around just like that, stamping the Kupau, the straw and the mud together and um, would put that mixture then in these forms and they would bake in the sun for three days. Then they would flip it over the form and would bake the other side for three days. And this is how you get these adobe blocks. And they are very, very heavy. And then you layer them, as you can see over there on the right side, you layer them brick by brick, but you need to also cover them. So once they are covered, they are good for many, many years. And here would be the outdoor kitchen for the uh, Indian population, which were constantly growing and uh, getting bigger. So here the women would cook for uh, all the Indians and the, and the Indians which would have joined the mission. And another very interesting thing is this Catalan furnace, which would be able to go up to 1,900 degrees Fahrenheit, and they would be able to make metal and nails and tools and plows, everything what the mission would need for farming and uh, sustaining itself so one of the few uh, maybe the only catalan furnace here preserved in this uh, mission san juan capistrano very important uh, tool here we have a mission garden as i mentioned the indians would not have known uh, vegetables fruits and this was introduced by the spanish missionaries one steer could get you 100 pounds of fat and in these calderones in these big pots they would uh, use that fat they got out from the steer to make candles oils uh, all sorts of things soap this would be uh, made here uh, in these calderones and they would heat it up cleanse out the impurities of the fat and get a block of uh, talc need a beer talking too much again we are in our beautiful mission plaza here here you have a typical California Mediterranean type plant the bugambeya and this here 
is a pomegranate plant. So you see the little pomegranate already developing out of the flower. Or maybe here, this is even better. Right there you have a flower and a pomegranate developing. Here we are in a social room. So uh, you have uh, the mission where we're very hospitable to travelers and they exchange news and information. And this would be set up like one of those rooms. And so this was a socializing, very simple uh, plates and uh, furniture. And interesting enough, see chocolate. They would trade it for chocolate and this would be obviously a very luxury item. Uh, what they would get on special occasions uh, but this would be like a socializing room everything would be for free from the uh, church and in exchange for information on what's happening in other missions what's happening around uh, them in California and uh, they were always looking for welcoming travelers here we are in one of the Padre sleeping rooms so they would uh, sleep here and they would wear or cover themselves uh, with a tunic which is over there and this would be woven by the Indian women once they learned uh, from their basket weaving they were very skilled weavers they easily adapted to weaving this type of material the um, blankets and uh, tunics for the Franciscan priests and then here, as you can see, adobe walls are very, very thick. So the advantage of living in an adobe house would be in the winter time, in the summer time, sorry, it would be very nice and cold and fresh, keep the heat out in the California heat. But in the winter time, they would be extremely cold. So one of the padres who used to live here, Padre Mott, uh, would live in the most desperate time of the mission and when it was totally run down and uh, down to uh, nearly extinction, he installed this uh, furnace over there to heat himself up. And he used to live above us upstairs, but these stairs actually were not here. So this was later added. He had a rope ladder where he would climb up to protect himself from uh, pirates and from Zorro, because the legend of Zorro started in this mission. Now we have the center and the jewel of the mission. The mission is so famous because Father Sarah, Saint Sarah, celebrated Mass in this particular chapel, which was not all the way, you can see, as it is right now, but it was only halfway. Lady of Guadalupe, and here we have the shrine of Saint Pellegrin, a very famous shrine for cancer patients. They come from all over the Southland to pray to St. Pellegrin and ask for his intercession. The original church can only go up to here, to the crest, and the congregation expanded and they needed to add on to the, to the, uh, to, to the room. And so they expanded it out. And the way the Indians were taught, we're teaching them through the pictures. And um, these are original pictures from Mexico City. And they used to help the Indian understand the way of the cross and the way of salvation to them. Here we have very nice replicas of a fresco that used to be in the church. So it's a lime um, plaster. And then the Indians would paint on the wet plaster. The color would soak in and would stay permanently in the plaster. So this represents the waves, the grains, the bells, and the flowers we find here in uh, Southern California. It's the patron saint of uh, Sa Mission San Juan Capistrano. San Juan Capistrano himself This is still an active church, so if you come here at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning, you will be able to hear Latin Mass. And the interesting thing about this 
retablo, which is behind me, this was actually not here. This just was built 1923. So in the original church, when they were worshiping with the Indians, they were just sitting on the ground and sitting on mats, and they did not have this beautiful retablo, which came from Barcelona via Los Angeles, and it was in 26 crates, and when they opened the 26 crates, they did not know what was in it, till they found out that this beautiful uh, altarpiece was inside the crates, and you can see they didn't expect that it was so tall, so they needed to build up the chapel a little bit higher to fit the retablo in it. So here we are on the grave of Father O'Sullivan who actually discovered the retablo we saw inside. And the retablo is actually 400 years old, came from Barcelona and uh, he set it all up together. So he was this kind of the second founder of the mission after it has been in disarray and we are in the cemetery which nobody else has been buried except Father O'Sullivan, the second founder. And um, here we have up to 3,000 people buried in this little cemetery. And in one year, 1806, in two months, we had unfortunately over 100 people die of diseases the Spanish and the mix Mexican missionaries introduced to the Indians, which, uh, as we know, were not immune against these uh, European diseases. And that is our little cross to remember the labor and the work the Indians did for this mission. So the mission is famous for its swallows and the legend has it that a uh, shopkeeper in San Juan Capistrano here in the little city was knocking all the swallow nests down and the swallows were so angry and then the father uh, O'Sullivan came along and said come little swallows follow me I give you a home and that's how the legend of the mission of swallows came about. Unfortunately, during earthquake reconfiguration, when they made the uh, ruin here earthquake safe, uh, all the swallows were disturbed and fled. And so this uh, little arch here with these replicas of swallows nest and the uh, recordings are here to uh, re-attract the swallows back to the missions because uh, it unfortunately they skipped away during construction uh, when they made the church earthquake proof again. Okay. We have the bells. Two of the bells are original and the uh, two larger ones are recasts. They um, fell down and broke during the earthquake but the uh, two little ones are still uh, the original ones they rang at the mission when they built the great stone church. And the bells uh, gave a cycle of life to the Indians and to the rhythm of life to the Indians and to the, to the padres. So at six o'clock in the morning, they would um, ring. At 12 o'clock, they would call them to supper and to lunch. At three o'clock, they would call them to a prayer and at 5 o'clock it would indicate the um, end of the workday. So it gave them a beautiful rhythm, structure, discipline and a goal in life. So everything was regulated by the sounds of the bells which could be heard up to five miles into the lands. And so the uh, Indians uh, would always know what time it is, so to say. So now here we are in the Great Stone Church, how they call it. And the third secret about this mission is this was only the third stone church the missionaries ever built. The other two stone churches are Santa Barbara and Carmel. So this was a very unique uh, place here. And they honed the stones out uh, four miles from here. And then by ox cart and by manual labor, they rolled the stones back here and set it uh, together under the supervision of a Mexican uh, stonemason who came from uh, Mexico City. Unfortunately, he died halfway through the project. This stone uh, sturge used, 
was built for 10 years but then it only stood for uh, for two years and before it fell down through an earthquake 18012 and what happened is this tower here where the bells are came crumbling down the tower was as high as the palm trees you see in the background fell down right on the second cupola here and buried 40 people who died during the morning service and the Padres never rebuilt this church even so it must have been magnificent when you can imagine you came through this vast land uh, which is now settled of course but it was uh, only the church which climbed to the heavens what an inspiring sight that must have been for the Indians who would never have seen anything like that in their lifetime so now you are in the great stone church uh, which unfortunately came down through an earthquake uh, 1812 goodbye here you have our state flower the California poppies very famous and this year we had a super bloom and there were fields and fields of these orange explosions of the California poppies especially in Lancaster and on the way out the 15 towards San Diego and Orange County fields and miles of these carpets of, orange, of, of the California poppies so very rare every eight to ten years you see these bloom and they were uh, spectacular people from all over the world come and see this spectacle and here we have a prairie candle that's a, called a prairie candle and here we have a rose let's see if it smells no it does not and that is my goodbye bye bye Emma and Anna